Robert Streetwood, the protagonist of the Monkey Island games for God knows how many years. Don't have any, many. All right, LeChuck, put down the monkey and back away from my wife. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. That's well. How does it feel to suddenly be, have two Monkey Island games come out? It is, it is a shock. It was, you know, I mean, I did those first, the first couple games that I worked on, three and four in the series, and. You know, of course I wanted there to be more of them, obviously, but then, you know, kind of dragged on after a couple of years, they can go do another, and then a few more years drag on, well, maybe they can bring it back. It got to about six or seven years out, and I said, you know what, forget it, never coming back. It's had, I had a good run, it was all fine, and then all of a sudden, just out of the blue, not one, but two projects. So it's like, this 10-year layoff, it's like this abundance of monkeys, so it's very, very exciting. Excellent. What do you think about the sudden resurgence of adventure games and how popular they've become? I, I could not be more. I mean, I you know that was that was that was my thing. I mean, I was a huge fan of Monkey Island and all the other sorts of adventure games before I even got involved in the series. So I, I think it's it's. I feel like the time is right for it. You know, it's it's. It, I feel like the game industry. I mean, I'm I'm an expert on the game industry. You know, I, voiceover is my thing. But I am a fan. You know, I play a ton of video games, and I feel like it had to go through that phase where we were pushing pixels and just doing crazy action. Everything was whiz bang, and now I feel like it's ready. You have a you have like a broader market now. You have more people who just want to play good games and hear good stories and all that. And I feel like people are willing to uh, to sit and, and take a little breath and take something that's a little slower pace and enjoy a great story and great characters. And I feel like that's that's kind of the direction the pendulum is starting to swing again. And I think the time and that combined with the fact that now you got digital download, you know, which makes it so it makes it more feasible from a financial standpoint. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's exciting. I think the timing is right, and I hope I hope it sticks. I hope it really is. I hope it's not just a little flip here, but I hope it's really the start of another 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 era, if you will. So. Hi, my name's Guybrush Threepwood, and I want to be a pirate. Was it, uh, was, it was it easy to step back into the character after so long? And did you did you think about maybe trying to make the young guy rush from Super the Monkey Island Special Edition and the older one with the chin beard from Tails? Did you try to make them different, or did you play them straight the same way? I, I did. I wanted. To, I tried to make him a little distinct, but not you know not too much. You can't you can't mess with Guybrush too much. I mean, the world can kind of, can kind of change around him, but but that that essence has to be there. I mean, I tried to keep doing the remake of the original. I tried to keep just very clean, very young, very naive, but also the script makes that easy. You know, I mean, when when, when you have guys who are who are really great writers on it, that that um, it, you don't have to think about how to read it because it's right there. I mean, the, the way to read it is in the line when it's well written. So that makes it that makes it easy for me because the guys who are writing it are guys who are writing art, it's a fantastic job. There. And then you know, now he's a little older. He's got his feet under him a little bit. You know, he's a little more maybe a little more confident. Still pretty naive. Still, still bumbles his way through what he has to bumble his way through. But, but I mean, I think there's there's enough movement there where you buy that. Yeah, he is growing a little bit. He is changing a little bit. But this is still guy we're talking about, you know. And, and you don't you don't want him to change too much. Okay, no problem. I just need to find a fresh supply of impossible to find voodoo root beer. Tales of My Gun is obviously an episodic version of the game. Yes. Um, how does that uh, integrate with the uh, recording of dialogue? Is it all done beforehand, or does it is it a, a, an ongoing process whilst the content is being created? Doing the voiceover for an episodic game is actually, from from a, from, a, from my standpoint, is way more enjoyable. It, it's a, it, it's 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 so much easier because for the old games, um, you know those those full fledged, massive budget, huge. You know, however many hours they were, you know, we get a script. It was like, you know, this thing, literally a huge binder, and half of that would be, at least half of that would be my material, more than half of it actually. Um, and you know, I'd get in the studio with the director, and we'd be there for three weeks, four weeks, eight hours a day. I mean, it takes a long time to get through all that dialogue, and especially with something like this, you know, it's very, it's very lighthearted. You know, Guybrush is a pretty, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of energy there, and. It's hard to maintain energy for eight hours a day, five days a week, for three or four weeks in a row. So, you know, you try to keep it light and take your breaks and all that, but it's it, it's a real challenge. But with the episodic stuff now, um, you know, I come in, we'll record for a couple of days. It's really easy to, you know, get really juiced up and, and, and you know, bust it out and have a real good time with it. And just about the time you're saying, okay, I'm getting a little tired. It's like, all right, we're done with that episode. Let's go take a break for a month. And then, I mean, they're still working on it, obviously. They're working like crazy on it nonstop. But I'll go away for a month and then I'll come back and we'll record for a couple more days. So it's, from, from, from a performer standpoint, it's actually really, really nice. And I think, uh, I think that probably comes through in the performance, too. What in the name of Satan's comb over are you good for, you bloated old sea hag? What was that? Uh, so have you had a chance to check out the rest of the show? 
Not yet. Not yet. I know it's. I'm dying. I think tomorrow morning is probably gonna be. I think I got a window for a few couple hours tomorrow morning where I can get out and about and check things out. And I'm dying to get around and see what I can see. So. And uh, last question: How long can you hold your breath on the water? About ten minutes. <laughs> I know it really is. He, 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 he mopped the floor with me, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm working on it. Though.